So, welcome again to this uh, new lecture on uh, solar photovoltaics principles, technologies and materials. We will again look at the p-n junction in light. So, let me just uh, recap the last lecture. In the last lecture, we were talking about uh, p-n junction. So, we uh, in the lecture before, we did analysis of p-n junction in light and we got the current expressions for uh, electron current, hole current and the space charge region current and we looked at the uh, simplifying those equations with making certain assumptions. So, first assumption was that what, ha what will happen if you, if you make, uh, if you analyze them for p n junction in dark and without illumination and that is straightforward, it should take you to p n junction in equilibrium which means there is no current flowing. And uh, then we looked at the case of p n junction in dark without illumination, but with applied bias and then that should take us back to the p n junction in dark without the bias. However, later we introduced, uh, since we introduced space charge region current, uh, which, which, is, which is finite in practical diodes and as a result of this re recombination within space charge region as well as radiative recombination in the semiconductors, we have uh, recombination um, current from space charge region and this gives rise to non-ideality in the uh, devices. So, if you, if you recall, uh, we had this curve, um, we had this expression here. This uh, tells us that dark current is equal to the diffusion current, which we also derived earlier, but in addition now we have added space charge recombination generated current and radiative recombination and these factors are dominant in practical devices. So, if you have indirect band gap semiconductor, generally it is observed that radiative recombination is higher uh, and the space charge recombination is lower as a result. Um, uh, sorry, indirect band gap semiconductor because uh, you have lesser in radiative recombination, and if the diffusion lengths are larger than the junction widths, then as a result, or space charge region width, then uh, your uh, dark current is predominantly uh, diffusion limited. However, for direct band gap semiconductor which have high absorption wide space charge region as a result the carriers do recombine. So, more recombination losses and high radiative recombination in these semiconductors this gives rise to a dependence of uh, QV by 2 kT which is observed. And generally what happens is that we see more than one processes as a result we have a uh, we generalize this equation as J dark V is equal to J naught uh, into exponential like QV by m kT minus 1 where m is the ideality factor. So, when m is equal to 1, which means the behavior of device is ideal, but if m is greater than 1, then the device behavior is non-ideal, which means more than one processes are active in terms of dark, as far as dark current is concerned. So, this is what we were doing. So, generally there is a transition from space charge current to diffusion current that happens at very low voltages, but if your carrier lifetimes are smaller, carriers diffuse, they recombine uh, or diffusion lengths are shorter, then uh, the transition to diffusion current is at higher voltages that is what we saw. And then finally, we were looking at the p n junction under illumination uh, where uh, we said that uh, uh, you have a uh, semiconductor device with 0 voltage applied and there is no net recombination in a space charge region. However, you have lot of generation. So, as a result you have large generation current within the space charge region at um, um, at 0 bias. So, the total current is now equal to electron current at minus W p plus hole current at plus W n plus the generation current. Uh, you will have some recombination also, but the generation current dominates over anything else as a result. So, you will have always radiative recombination in the devices, but since you do not have any applied bias, uh, there is no space charge uh, limited current here, SCR current. So, this total current is the integration of this uh, spectral current over the whole energy range. What happens here is the quasi Fermi levels for electrons and holes because of increase in population of electrons on the p side and holes on the n side, the Fermi levels are split and this change in the Fermi levels on p and n side gives rise to migration of uh, holes from n to p side and p to n side, uh, electrons from p to n side which is counterintuitive against the p n junction in dark and this gives rise to a current which is negative in sign and that is what you observe at 0 bias and this is the current which is driven by split changes in the Fermi level and this Fermi level gradient is the one which drives the electron down to um, down to the um, uh, n side from p side and hole from n side to p side which is normally not the case in p n junction in uh, dark. 
So, now we are going to uh, further analyze this. So, if you look at the further, uh, if you just look at those equations, so the equations in this case, the Jn and Jp equations, you can see the current sign is in negative. You have this Is term and there are other factors which, 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 which are uh, with respect to uh, your um, surface recombination velocity, diffusion lens and coefficient of thermal, coefficient of absorption etcetera. And the total current now since we said total current is a negative right. We said that this current all these three currents that we look. So, we, 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 we said that J total was equal to J n E minus W p plus J p E W n plus J gen all these three currents are negative. So, the total current of this device is basically the current is negative. So, minus of J n E minus W p plus minus of J p E W n. Uh, so, if you want to just convert, uh, so you need to basically integrate this um, over the whole energy range and this should also be integrated over the whole energy range. Uh, and the total current which is obtained because of the current which is uh, uh, because of electron hole migration and generation current, this should be so diffusion current plus generation current, this should give you uh, uh, the ratio of this current with respect to whatever power is incident according to that. So, number of basically this is the spectral flux or spectral energy, if you multiply this by charge you will get that, that many number of carriers that should be created. So, ratio of these two will give you the quantum efficiency of the device. Okay. So, suppose uh, you had uh, 100 photons falling here, 100 photons will give you 100 electrons plus 100 holes. right? What you get here will be some other number, it will be x electrons and some y holes let us say right? because of differences in electron and hole current they are not similar. So, the ratio of current corresponding to this, this with respect to what should have been ideally created is the quantum efficiency. Okay. So, this is what you have got and this is what you should get ideally and uh, of course, this, this number x and y is always going to be smaller than, so some of this is always going to be smaller than 100 that you get here. So, that is why the quantum efficiency is not 100 percent, but rather lower. So, you can get quantum efficiency of the order of 80 percent, 70 percent or so in semiconductor devices. So, to solve this further, you can you can uh, approximate and this approximation is, uh, you can first you can make a long base approximation. Long base approximation means the diode is very thick, the, th the p-n junction is extremely thick and we assume that x p is greater than x l n and x n is greater than l p. In such a case, surface recombination term becomes invalid as a result you can modify these expressions as the electron and hole current expressions are modified in this fashion. So, you can see here that the surface recombination terms vanish. So, these two terms become much more simpler primarily dependent upon the minority carrier lifetimes, absorption coefficient and the width of junction and uh, width of device that is the only factor it depends upon. You can also make short base uh, approximation when L p and L n are much longer than x, x n and x p. So, you can see that this is the assumption that we make this is a short base diode. In such a situation your surface recombination is, uh, is uh, relevant, but L n and L p becomes irrelevant because they are longer than s n and s p. As a result you will see that L n and L p disappear what you have is surface recombination term appearing. So, this is how you simplify the equations that you see in the first slide. I mean this is this is this has both the terms the, the recombination term the, the surface recombination term as well as the uh, diffusion length term. So, we make these approximations to calculate these uh, currents with much more simpler. So, this is what the current you will get for without the bias. So, of course, the total current that you will obtain is J total that you will have is so, minus Jsc is the one which you obtain from the short circuit and whatever is J rad which is the positive current which is going to give rise to. So, uh, so this or you can I mean plus and minus signs will depend upon how you take, but this is the let us say if you make it this plus this will be the negative current, this will be the 
positive current, radiative current and this radiative current or recombination current or diffusion current whatever you generate as a function of bias when you apply bias this will start countering this current. So, that is why you will see uh, what you get at 0 bias if you plot I v this is the short circuit current all right at 0 bias and as you keep applying bias the curve goes like this. This means your I s c is being now countered by I v which is the diffusion current which is the space charge recombination current and if you have any radiative recombination current that will also contribute and they are all positive currents. So, all the positive current factors which we saw earlier for p n junction in dark they will start opposing this negative contribution. So, and that is obvious from the Fermi level that, that is obvious from the uh, this, this diagram as well. So, this is the p n junction diagram. So, the negative current is because of, so this is p, this is n. So, negative current is because of movement of let us say, uh, so we said that movement of holes from, oops, from this side to that side. Similarly, electrons will move from, so these are the electrons. So, both of these will give rise to JSC. And as you apply bias, what will happen is that as you apply bias, the holes from this side which are plenty in number. So, holes from this side they will start moving to this side and electrons from this side, so these two will contribute to I v and they will start countering your I s c. Okay? Is that clear? So, this is what the, the basically reason behind the shape of the I v curve that you get why does the current become 0 at certain point. So, at certain point which is called as open circuit voltage the current becomes equal to 0 because I v starts dominating over I s c. Okay? So, this is what we have discussed so far. So, essentially if you have now if you have a p n junction illuminated p n junction with bias let us say. So, if you have if you have a eliminated p n junction with bias let us say we make a plot of energy as a function of distance x. So, let us say this is your E c okay, and this is your uh, so somewhere here let us say okay. so this is your Okay, and this is basically you can say this is now equal to V B i minus V because now you have applied bias V A. Okay. So, the Fermi levels will start slowly slowly start shifting down. So, this Fermi level which is E F n the quasi Fermi level for electrons which goes like this the quasi Fermi level for holes which is on this side it goes like this. Okay something like that. So, this is let us say E f p. So, normally see the beauty of this is normally you consider for p side the Fermi level corresponding to holes because p side is a hole rich. You consider a Fermi level for electrons because this side is electron rich, but since because of illumination you have caused sudden flux of carriers these Fermi levels are also corresponding to electrons and corresponding to holes are very high and that is what drives down the electron migration and hole migration from this to this side. This is now countered by uh, electron migration from hole migration electron migration uh, from uh, so this is from n side. So, this is electron migration and this would be hole as a function of voltage okay. and this is what will give rise to your decrease in the current. So, current will slowly decrease 
as v increases until v o c when i v takes over i s c. Okay? So, that is what will happen. So, when the bias induced current which is the forward current takes over the diffusion current and space charge current and so on and so forth when it takes over the short circuit current that is generated only because of primarily because of generation. Okay? So, generally what happens in a solar cell device is so solar cell device let us say we have a junction like this assuming that you have a junction in this fashion so that your sun uh, sunlight is coming in this fashion from top let us make it orange this is sunlight and you have a p n junction which is uh, something like this. So, you have a let us say this is p side this is n side this is space charge region okay, in between. So, first you are going to have absorption in the p layer then you are going to have absorption in the n layer in between you are going to have absorption in the space charge layer. So, the quantum efficiencies vary something like that in, in semiconductors devices. So, if you now plot the quantum efficiency as a function of wavelength, then you are uh, uh, basically in the in the p layer the so shorter wave. So, you will see that the longer uh, your shorter wavelengths are going to be absorbed in this region. So, in this region you will have short lambda absorption and this layer you will have long lambda absorption. So, you will see that the absorption the quantum efficiency for bottom layer is high in this region, the top layer contributes in this region somewhere here something like that and a space charge region will contribute somewhere in between okay. and the overall quantum efficiency will be if I now plot the overall this will be overall quantum efficiency. So, this is q e overall this is from top this is from bottom and this is from space charge region. Since the space charge region is very narrow that quantum efficiency of this region is also and also there is lot of recombination in space charge region as a result uh, the quantum efficiency is smaller in case of space charge region, but generally p and n sides have high quantum efficiencies and high quantum efficiencies generally are obtained when. So, high quantum efficiency is obtained when you have surface passivation which means you have low surface recombination right. this is mainly due to dangling bonds. So, if you reduce the number of dangling bonds on the surface the carriers will not get recombined at the surface. So, and also reduce the reflection losses which means the carriers are not reflect the photons are not reflected all of them are absorbed. And then of course, increase the cell width. So, suppose you have I naught here you do not want anything to come out here. So, cell if the cell width is larger then more radiation is absorbed within the solar cell. So, you can put reflectors for another. So, it is not a problem in silicon solar cell, but it could be an issue in the thin, thin film solar cells where the thicknesses are lower. So, so basically increase the cell width to improve photon absorption. Okay and more photons you absorb better the quantum efficiency. And then of course, you have light trapping to prevent light loss to prevent photon loss. So, essentially the idea is suppose you throw 100 photons on top the idea is to maximize all of those photons in carrier generation and then carrier collection. Okay. So, if you throw 100 photons in you are likely to create 100 electrons in whole pairs and device engineers job and materials engineers job is to collect all those 100 electrons and 100 holes at the uh, terminals. So, that you collect all the carriers 
otherwise there will be recombination of carriers or if you lose photons of course, you are not going to correct you are not going. So, uh, so you, you want to achieve every you want to adopt every means to ma maximize the quantum efficiency such as by doing surface passivation. So, that it does not so even if you absorb let us say 100 photons the carriers are going to be recombined at the surface. So, you want to passive at the surface to prevent that you want to reduce the reflection losses. So, that you capture all the photons you increase the cell width. So, again you capture all the photons as much as possible and then you do light trapping strategies to prevent the uh, photons from escaping. Okay. So, these are the uh, techniques that uh, we generally uh, follow as far as uh, uh, methods of uh, quantum machine improvements are concerned. So, um, <coughs> and there are other factors also which you can consider to improve the current collection and these other factors are dependent upon for example, materials quality. So, uh, material quality has various connotations to it we will come to that. So, basically what we mean in terms of semiconductors is to uh, materials quality means. So, material quality will mean low defect density. Generally, if you have higher defect density, you will have more recombination as a result more current will be your fill factor basically these will reduce your fill factor. So, if you look at this IV curve, okay, the idea is to get an IV curve which is like this. But if your IV curve happens to be like this, all right, something like that, this means your IV is more dominant than it should be. And remember, IV is made up of what? IV is made up of uh, your uh, diffusion current, space charge current, and radiative rec recombination current. So, which means if you if your stage uh, if uh, and this this is this is uh, well visible in the dark data. So, if you analyze the dark data very well you can see which of these factors is dominating and this is most of the times related to defect density. So, if you if, if your defect density is lower then of course, uh, your uh, material has. Uh, so, idea is to increase ln and lp they will improve the uh, they will reduce the recombination and idea is also to reduce the sn and sp. Okay. And uh, uh, of course, uh, there are other defects in the material microstructural defects and so on and so forth they should be uh, reduced in density. And uh, another thing which is quite commonly talked about is in is in uh, silicon context in silicon generally the top layer is called as emitter we will see this later on and the bottom layer is called as base and this top layer is generally p plus and this is n layer. Oh, sorry, uh, it's this is n this is n plus and this is p layer. I'm sorry. So this top layer is generally this is p n plus kind of junction. So emitter is generally made very thin as compared to base because the carrier recombination is larger in case of uh, so beca because the carrier lifetimes are longer in base. Electrons have longer by lifetimes in in base. As a result, you can make the p thicker as compared to n side. So, carriers travel longer distance as it is. So, this is something. So, effect of basically you can say x p uh, and uh, s n because you will have electrons coming on this side. So, you, you are going to look at the electron recombination uh, velocity surface recombination and the electron diffusion lens within within the p side. So, this is the these are important factors as far as silicon semiconductor devices are concerned. So, silicon solar cells have these uh, practices which are which are about making emitter thin and um, base thicker. There are some things also related to let me just uh, show you some data with respect to. So, if you look at for example, uh, quantum efficiency as a function of uh, wavelength. So, this is lambda in nanometer. So, we are generally plotting from about 400 to let us say about 900. So, if your x p is uh, thin for certain case. So, let us say in, in, in the case where recombination is large as you increase the thickness. So, if your if your thickness is so let us say if your x n or x p whichever you you may have if your quantum efficiency is like this and suppose you start making the layer thicker 
thicker layer on one hand lead to improved absorption, they also lead to higher recombination. So, if you increase this x, let us say xp in certain case, then increase in xp can lead to decrease in the quantum efficiency because of increased recombination. This is true for certain cases, it may not be true for all the cases, but for certain cases. And then we have for example, surface recombination velocity. So, if you plot surface recombination velocity as a function of lambda, so if you have low S n, then your curve is like this, but if your S n increases, the curve tends to be like this. So, you can have curves like that. So, again 400 to 900 let us say. So, this is you can say increase in for example, S n okay, for a certain semiconductor device and uh, likewise you can have uh, effect of uh, if this is for S n, you can also for S p for the other the this, this curve may also depending upon the. So, in this case this is the top layer because you can see that the most of the decrease is happening in the top layer. This is also in the top layer. So, these are both related to top layer. It can also happen in the bottom layer like this. So, if you are uh, in this case, I think it is about when your uh, carrier recombination length, you can say diffusion length decreasing. Okay. So, quantum efficiency decreases and this is in the top layer region. So, whether it is because of L p or L n or S p or S n, it, it, it that will depend upon the type of semiconductor device, but you can see in which region the decrease or increase is happening. So, if, if the decrease is happening on the shorter wavelength side, then it is mainly because of uh, the top layer and if it is happening in the longer wavelength side it is happening because of the bottom layer. So, we will stop here today, uh, we will discuss other things about the solar cell operation in the next class and uh, there are few more things before we go to discussion of materials and technologies. Thank you.